basically, I just want to thank um, the, the three gentlemen before me. And like, if we will closing the loop, you know, there are experiments that we heard about, you know, in the Facebook uh, slideshow. Uh, there is the Kayenta solution, which is amazing. And by the way, Waze is a user of the Kayenta solution. Uh, maybe I will talk about it later on. But both from the upstream and the downstream, everything relates to metrics, numbers, and monitoring. Okay? So I think that it, uh, it was unplanned, but I think it would be a great way to, you know, like finish today's session before the Q&A and talk a little bit about monitoring. Okay? Now, as uh, Matt mentioned before about this slideshow, this slideshow is not about specific solution. Okay? It's about like way of thinking when you architect large scale um, data centers, information like virtual data centers, whatever, uh, and what you need to take into account, as we see it from our experience, uh, uh, in order to you know bypass the obstacles and they will come. Okay. Okay. So my name is Daniel. Nice to meet you, Daniel Moore. Um, I'm working at Waze for Waze. So basically, I'm part. W I'm located in Israel. Most of Waze headquarters, engineering, whatever. Most of the team is located in Israel. A startup that was bought by Google a few years ago, of course. I'm part of the infrastructure team, what we call the IFS team. In Google terms, it's like SRE, if you're familiar. In the complete world, it's what's called DevOps, okay? We are mainly uh, the admins of the production team, the production uh, um, solution of uh, ways. And we are also the ones to get, you know, at night when something is not working, two little kids, wife, after dinner, going to sleep. Pager, okay? This is how I look like when I get a pager. So <laughs> hopefully it will not happen now. Basically, some more details about our team because it's very relevant to monitoring and the complex situation that we could have, but we are trying to make it very convenient. So as mentioned, we are part of Google. We are like a autonomous squad inside a Google. Maybe the most interesting thing to note is that we are also AWS users because back on the days, Amazon, uh, Waze was based on Amazon. We're in a process to migrate to GCP. A lot of our services is there. But currently, we are multi-cloud, which makes the monitoring even harder, including the experiments and stuff like that. OK? Um, I think I don't love to read you know, sentences from the slideshow, but I think that our services scale up fast, our team scale up slower, is something that's worth to mention. We are a small team managing huge amount of traffic, services, instances, etc. Our infrastructure is mostly based on microservice architecture, okay? Uh, with app layer, cache layer, database layer, etc. A very, very big and uh, you know performance-oriented real-time infrastructure, and we need to do things right or at least try. Okay, trying is a very good and important thing. Okay, now there is a slide show here, uh, and again, it's my terms for today. Uh, this is what I call the classic way of monitoring, okay? Uh, and again, as I told, it's something in general, okay, not specific solution. So, how many in the audience like familiar with the, uh, you know, the the way of working that I'm a DevOps in, in some nice company, maybe in the Bay Area, maybe maybe in the Bay Area, maybe in Israel, and I want to monitor something. So I install a monitoring server, and it's not relevant which solution. I install monitoring agents on the machine that usually are, you know, pre-made, pre-ready. Uh, basically, they give me a lot of opportunities and stuff to do and pressing the play button, right? Most of us are familiar with this thing. It's great, it's amazing, it's working, but when you get bigger, it becomes problematic. Just one little example. When you, when you become bigger, it's not just the number of machines that you need to configure with things like, you know, maybe Puppet, Chef, tools like that, like automated uh, tools to, de to develop configuration and such. It became also more, and it's like, it's, it's always happening. It's like becoming more from normal monitoring to APM-related monitoring. APM, application performance monitoring, right? I don't really care about the single server or the single disk. I'm working with microservice, APIs. I want to understand they, you know, behave as needed. And A talks to B, which talks to C. I have a lot of dependencies. Maybe I'm working with a low latency uh, uh, environment and such. So it's become a lot more complicated. Imagine, you know, in simple terms, that each new feature at Waze need to be monitored, okay? So back on the days, I need to go to all of the servers of the service and do client-side configuration. It's a med. And we really believe in velocity, and we need to run quick, so it's not the way to go. 
So what we can offer, or what we can plan, by the way, this is exactly what I just told you about the problems of the classic way, okay? And I also prepared, I know that, you know, today uh, technical people will be on the audience, so basically the slideshow as I see it is like a tutorial that maybe you can use later on with the bullets of what to take into recommendation when I'm planning such monitoring infrastructure. Um, everything is written here, is things that, you know, we, s we suffer back on the days from. Maybe you're familiar with them, maybe not, but if there's a chance that we will save you something, it's good, okay? Okay, so as I mentioned, in large-scale light environments, the per instance, per disk, per computer is less relevant. We are more interested in the microservice and application layer, okay? Uh, of course, there are different levels, but basically, this is it. Um, most traditional monitoring solutions are more like working with the classic way of monitoring, CPU, RAM, per machine, things like that, okay? In order to make it more APM, related point of view, I need to work hard. And by the way, this is the reason that there are APM solutions out there, okay? Specific for these needs. But I don't want to get rid of my current monitoring solution, maybe. I just want to extend it some way, okay? Um, monitoring hundreds of new application features and such become problematic, okay? And of course, what's important to mention, and it will occur in another slide from a different perspective, Monitoring, and by the way, this is, uh, if I may, before I joined Waze, I was, for a lot of years, freelance in the domain of DevOps and such. Monitoring is not just tech. After all, you are working for a business. Business, you know, want to earn money and such. And a lot of other people, not just tech people, watching the graphs, okay? And maybe analyze it and things like that. So you need to remember it, both because the output, you know, have a lot of eyes, and both, and I will get to it in a later slide, you need to uh, consult with other team members, which are not just technical, while building the solution. And I think this is a real problem that not all of the time uh, we are used to, to, to commit or to do. Okay, so what I call the recommended large-scale way, and again, just from our own experience, uh, it's something that put like a mid-layer between, if you will, the monitoring servers, let's call it monitoring clients, you know, the service, and the monitoring system, okay? Because we need a monitoring system. It could be something that we wrote. It could be something that we bought. It could be open source. Everything is okay. But I think that if you're using something that's called monitoring gateway and the counterpart, which called monitoring endpoints on the monitored clients, your life apparently will be easy, mostly if you will want to grow, okay? And now we will deep dive into this subject. So again, it's just an example, but I think it's a good example. Imagine that we are working on a microservice setup, an architecture, okay? Let's imagine, just imagine that we have some Java code, microservice A, okay? The Java application knows what it knows to do and what it needs to do. We really believe that if you will take this Java application and as part of the microservice stack that holds the Java application, you will configure or code something that call monitoring endpoint, which basically could work in which protocol that you prefer, but HTTP is a good example. And what will happen by the scenes is that this Java main process will tell everything that you know or needs to tell to this monitoring endpoint. Your life will be, your life will be a lot more easier because then you can take all of this information from the monitoring endpoint and based on your judgment, push, pull, send it to different uh, places, which basically the next place on the chain, instead of the monitoring system, and we will soon understand why, will be the monitoring gateway. Now again, monitoring gateway is a term that I invented for this lecture. It's more understanding the concepts. Basically, I'm telling you that I'm taking my client server architecture and put it on a free tier layer, okay, with a monitoring gateway inside. But one of the main concepts of the solution is the monitoring endpoint because it's the one that closest to the application and knows all of the information from it. So basically, what is a monitoring gateway? And again, this is the reason uh, we are here today. Monitoring gateway, as I see it, most of the times will be custom-made solution. As I see it, it's not something you will buy. It's something that you, big companies, most of the times, you know, code their own monitoring solution because the market not always can cope with what we have, okay? So basically, it's some kind of a mid layer between the clients, monitoring clients and the server. Now, it's 
one of the most important things for the full APM solution, and why? Because the monitoring gateway holds all the logic, okay? For example, if you know, and I guess you know, and I'm sure you know, monitoring also costs, compute, networking, stuff like that. Now, there's always the, dec the decision if I want, you know, my monitoring clients to work harder or the monitoring server to work harder. With a monitoring gateway, mostly talking on a microservice architecture, you create him by itself as a microservice, which could be auto-scaled, and he will take all of the responsibility for the compute and such, okay? So, for example, one of the most interesting things I can do, it's metrics aggregators, right? You have different services, different information. We, mostly in Google, we love raw information, okay? We love, but then we need to take all of this information and do something with it. Now, I can do it in the middle layer and save all of the compute and, you know, waste of CPU time and such from the client that need to answer quickly client request or the server, the, the monitoring server, which is busy, okay? Even if it's a cluster, it will be very busy and maybe holds the front ends and things like that. So this is one thing. Support rich set of features, ex another example, of course, as I mentioned, is aggregators, but you can do stuff like you can publish APIs of your monitoring gateway that people in the company could use in order to fetch data, okay? Monitoring gateway, not still the monitoring solution on the uh, end of the tunnel, but you can also choose what information, like a proxy from the monitoring gateway, will bypass to the monitoring system, okay? Now, when the developers need to create some dashboards and stuff, okay, which are not part of the monitoring solution on the end, on the monitoring server on the end, it can use the APIs of this monitoring gateway in order to fetch the data and create some custom per team, per solution dashboard, okay? You know, like blue, uh, like r uh, red, green, yellow, whatever, for his team, I don't need the abilities of the monitoring system that maybe even doesn't have disabilities, okay? Another thing, and this is something we do specifically at Waze, we allowing our developers, and maybe it's something that we will talk about in the Q&A, the ability to talk or to configure this monitoring gateway. I mean, if I'm a developer and I want statistics, something very complicated. From microservice A with microservice B, I want maybe to, you know, get them together in order to get into some state of mind. I can do it on the monitoring gateway level, and from there, it will be automatically shipped to the monitoring solution, okay? So a mid-layer, very powerful one that could help me a lot, okay? One thing that I want to mention, which is very, very uh, important, when you getting bro grow uh, and getting big, when you grow and uh, uh, getting big, uh, the issue of dependencies, both by microservice, A to B, B to A, but both of the backends, for example, microservice A works with Memcache and Cassandra, okay? If you are the on call at night and you get the escalation pager, you don't have time to, you know, open the book of all services and trying to understand from scratch what's happening. You want to see one dashboard, okay, with all of the details. Because all of the information bypass the monitoring gateway, he has all the knowledge and all the logic. So you can connect between microservice and the backend services they are using and get the full picture of the flow, okay? And basically it's saying you're coming back to sleep earlier. Okay? You save 10 minutes from your sleep. Um, okay, another thing that I want to mention, and by the way, I, I did haven't write it, but again, you could start, you know, from being small and then become large, and you know, maybe you will find out that your current monitoring solution is not enough. So another thing that you could, could earn is that if you will come back to the slide, you can understand that it's become quite, quite easy, okay, to switch your monitoring system. Because if all of your data exists on your monitoring gateway, so you just need to replace the end of the tunnel with some different software or solution, and the data will continue to flow. So basically, it's a matter of architecting, making your life easier with the look forward, okay? So basically, um, and again, I don't love to read sentences, but it's things that, you know, I wrote because I really believe them. When you're architecting a large-scale monitoring solution, think, map, and plan. Again, it's buzzwords, but they are important, okay? If we will wait with them too much, it will be really, really complicated to do. Uh, I think all of you know, if you read some SRE, um, you know, concepts and stuff in Google, and it was, we believe in this stuff from the moment we develop, not after we got the problem. It's a huge difference, okay? It's a state of mind. 
you need to make sure that everything is monitored as needed from the start. Not easy, but this is how it works in large scale. Keeping the monitoring environment, you know, aligned, synced, and healthy is not an easy task, and it will require resources. resources. It's not one time job that, you know, you build the infrastructure and such, and hello, hello. Okay, you need to continue work on it all the time, and most of us, and of course, our managers and our budgets need to take it into account. It's a decent work that will never finish. Okay, and we need to make it better. We need to try to make it better all the time. Okay, as I told you before, remember, monitoring is not that tech core. The monitoring has aspects of business, okay? Of course, there are tools that are using the details from the monitoring solution in order to get to these details, but exactly, you know, as in machine learning and stuff like that, it will need always the best raw data that you can give to the solution in order to get to the right conclusions, or at least close. Okay, now, and this is like the last bullet. If, for example, I'm a developer on the monitoring team or whatever, um, just so you know, you need to think about solutions to monitoring issues as not as, you know, a, a small fix there, small things there. You need to think about it as a framework because if a developer will reach to me and ask me to monitor something, after that, another developer will come, and another developer will come, and most of the time, the things will be the same. So I just need to build in a framework point of view and not just simple solution point of view. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>